Beautiful. This is it. I just made a scallop dish that I'm gonna make at a pop-up dinner for 35 different YouTubers. And I wanna show you how I made this dish. I'm gonna go over to Pike Place Market. We're gonna grab some cherries because they're in season, some scallops, I'm gonna make a futakake, and I'll just run you how I made this dish. All right, everyone, I'm here at the Pike Place Market. I'm gonna do a little video on fruit at one of the fruit stands here. I think stone fruits are in season, so let's go find us some stone fruit right now. Get out of here. Right, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Chaz? Hey, doing great, man. Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. Thanks again for that great video. I didn't even realize until somebody showed me later. Oh, you saw? That was great, yeah. For sure. I'm just doing a thing with stone fruits today. Okay. I was thinking cherry or pluot. Yep, or... coming to your... Actually, I could probably bring you out a... I got these beautiful new uh, things that were just picked in Wenatchee. Oh, sweet. Sure. to die for, and I have a handful of huckleberries today if you're in the mood. Ooh, that'd be good, too. Hey, how are you? <laughs> good to see you, man. Good to see you, I watch your video all the time. Oh, you do? Yeah. These are uh, farm fresh. So my buddy Jesus, who's been doing business with us for, I don't know, 20 some years, he is our like, he's our cherry guy. And he just mm. brings us, um, you have to get scale in there though, just to show you how big these are. We call these eight rows. Nice. There's, uh, there's like a little, <laughs> like a, there's like a, a scale that shows, they're like, they have holes in them, right? Yeah. And so the smaller the number, the larger the hole. And this, when you get into single digits like this, this is like the holy grail when they get to be eight and nine rows. Yeah. Typically we get 10 rows here in Washington State. Um, but these are ginormous and with the size comes the- Those are super nice. Yeah, they oh, get all hey. the sugar too when they're this big. You want to try one? Hey. hey, man, I subscribe to you, bro. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, try that bro. out, seriously. You can have those, you can have a little taste. Oh, I didn't know you guys all watched it. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Now, <laughs> shoot, I've been a subscriber, bro. Right. Wow. Yeah. How you doing? Good, man. How you been? Good. Just gonna get some cherries here. Yeah. Some pucks too. Which these are, are freaking bomb, bomb dude. Are these great? I'm gonna like serve the these with uh, some scallops. Perfect. Let's go make a salad, young. Let's do it. How many people are you cooking for? Is it a demonstration? Thanks, Chaz. Hey, everyone, this is Chaz here. Hi. All right. The cool. awesome man behind Frank's Produce. Or one of many. I've been <laughs> many coming awesome here for like almost right. ten years. <laughs> All right, bro. Yeah, of course. Anything else, man? All right. I want to talk about stone fruit in this one and cherries in particular. Yes, they're a stone fruit and I want to make a cherry sabayon for a dish that I'm making at a pop-up dinner called We Bussin', but more on that in the next video. So I want to make a sauce for a scallop dish. And the sauce that I'm going to make is called a sabayon. Now a sabayon typically has a wine in it, like we used to do champagne at work. But for this one, it only makes sense to use a plum wine glass. Now first I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pit these cherries because I wanna utilize the juice and I also wanna use them as a garnish. I'm gonna use a cherry pitter just like this. Now this task does take quite a while, so be patient. Okay, my cherries are all pitted and ready to go. I'm gonna blend some with the plum wine. I only need about six-ish tablespoons of this stuff to get the egg yolks going. So I'm tossing that into the blender. About a quarter cup of my cherries. Oh, this smells so good. Look at how bright red that is. Strain this mixture because I need it to be very fine for what I'm gonna do later down the road. Beautiful. Then I'm gonna use something that is called forbidden rice. Now this stuff, I can puff up very nicely when I fry it. And I don't wanna be hearing, oh, but you already did that, or that's been done. Calm down, calm down, all right? I like using forbidden rice. I like puffing it. It's a good garnish. I'm not gonna do something new every freaking time. Come on. Now, when it comes to frying my rice, I prefer to use rice oil so it won't give it much of a taste. So the thing about this is you have to use forbidden rice. It cannot be any other black rice. Now, the reason being is forbidden rice, it's going to puff when you fry it straight from raw. If you wanna do this with any other rice, I will do a video on it if you comment down below. It's a very simple method. But for this one, it's just gonna be straight up raw forbidden rice. Toss it into our hot oil, and then we just fry it off. And then we just toss this onto a sheet tray that has a paper towel lined on it. And this is to make sure they get dried off. And then I'm gonna season them. For my seasoning, I'm gonna use some nori. And the nori, I'm just gonna chop up very small. 
I basically want it to match the size of my rice. And now we toss in the nori, followed by our rice, espalette for some spice, and then some dried California garlic flake. Season that with some kosher salt. And there we go, we have a beautiful, what I would consider a loose version of a futakake. Definitely not an OG version of a futakake. Let's try it out. That's delicious. Michael B. Jordan delivers a brawler in Creed 3. Has anyone seen this movie? I haven't seen it yet. Anyways, scallops. I would love to go over with you guys this little tidbit about scallops because I don't think a lot of you know this. First things first, very obvious. Your scallops, they should smell like nothing. If they smell fishy, toss them out. That's a no-go. I had some that were fishy smelling the other day. I did not eat those. Anyways, do with the scallops is you have to clean them of the abductor muscle. Actually, it looks like these might be cleaned. Wow. Okay, so it looks like my fish butcher cleaned these for me. I did buy them from Pike Place Market. They are very professional there, but let's pretend here. Typically there would be a little right here. You see that? That's the abductor muscle. You pull that off and that is how we clean the scallop. This stuff is going to be chewy. We can save this, mince it up and make a nice sauce out of it. Now, whenever I cook any seafood, I definitely pat it dry with a towel. When I was working in a restaurant, I always had a towel on my station for my fish and I would just pat it dry, just like such before cooking it off. Season it all generously with kosher salt. Get a ripping hot pan, some neutral oil, then the scallops go in. Then at the end, I like to season with my black pepper just so the black pepper doesn't burn. And that's the kind of cook I'm looking for with my scallop. I don't wanna go too far than this. It's gonna be chewy and rubbery. This is perfect. And now it's on to the main event, the sabayon. I have water in a pot. I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer. And while that is happening, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ready my eggs. I want just the yolks for this. Water has come to a simmer. Eggs go in. And then I want to begin whisking. You want to work on and off the heat so you don't scramble your eggs. Now, once the eggs are nice and ribbony, just like this, I can start to work in my cherry wine. And then once it's a nice ribbony consistency like this, my sabayon is done. Some salt, tasty taste. Fucking delicious. Okay, now check it out. This sauce is very foamy and luxurious looking, so it's not necessary, but I want to make it a little foamier. What I'm gonna do is put it into an ISI. So what I'm doing is I'm showing you exactly the way I'm gonna do this at my pop-up dinner. I'm gonna hold the sabayon in an ISI. And you're probably thinking, the ISI makes it cold. I don't know why a lot of people think that, but the ISI does not make it cold. And what I can do with the ISI is I can actually keep it warm and it's gonna stay intact. Two charges. Now I just take my warm water, I hold it there and the ISI is gonna stay warm thus causing my mixture inside to stay warm and it won't be cold. Now sabayon is typically served cold, but for this one, it's gonna be savory. I want it to be warm with my warm scallops. It's gonna be nice. Uh, now all there's left to do is plate up the dish. I'm gonna show you guys how I might plate the dish up, but I think I'm gonna get scallops that are on the shell. So it might be a little bit different, but I'm gonna give you somewhat of a way I'm gonna plate it. I'm gonna give you guys a little more in depth on how I think about plating things. So since I want it to be in the shell, I'm using a plate that sort of looks like a shell. It has these ridges. And then I'm gonna use this as my base plate. Now what I wanna do is I wanna give it some sort of depth. So I'm gonna use hibiscus flour because it smells really nice and it also looks really nice. So what I could do is put that dish right on top of that. And look at that, 
it's gonna be a pretty little presentation. That's a tasty set. If you guys are wondering what set means, that's what we call like all the components of a dish. Like say there's a fish dish that has like cucumbers and shallots and a sauce. We would call that the set for the fish. Anyways, that's my dish. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Comment, like, subscribe.